special meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for July 21st, 2020. I invite you to rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. We will then have a moment of silence in recognition of those who have served education in Baltimore County. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Baltimore County public schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in con consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting may be held virtually in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting, despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. This evening's Board of Education meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, which is on Comcast Xfinity Channel 73 and Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. The first item on the agenda is new business, action taken in closed session. And for that, I call on Mr. Newsbaum. Yes, good evening. Uh, just as a reminder, on July 14th last week, uh, the board considered several matters in closed session, including an appeal regarding a confidential employee matter in your quasi-judicial capacity. Uh, this matter was heard on the record as there was no timely request for oral argument made. At this time, it would be appropriate to confirm the actions taken in that closed session, including uh, the decision in hearing examiner number 20-40, and to authorize Ms. Gover to sign the order on behalf of the board members. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the additional action taken in closed session on July 14th, 2020? So moved, Opperman. Do I have a second? Second, Han. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Hager? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Chester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Mahomza? Mr. Mahomza? Yeah. Ms. Hem? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Abstain. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rao? Yes. Mr. Mahomsa? Thank you, Ms. Gover. That motion carries. The next item on the agenda is item C, unfinished business. And for that, we call on Dr. Williams to um, present. Good evening, everyone. Madam Chair, members of the board, this evening I'm requesting the board approval 
to engage students in virtual instruction for this upcoming school year, 2021, beginning September 8th, 2020, through the end of the first semester on January 29th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve Baltimore County Public Schools reopening plan for fall 2020? As Dr. Williams has stated. Molly, so moved. Oh. Is there a second? Second, off. second Offerman. Okay. Thank you. And next comes discussion, and I had um, two board members email with questions. So we're going to start with that, and then we'll uh, go around the dais. So, Ms. Hen? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, would you entertain a motion for an amendment to the reopening plan at this point? Yes. Thank you. I move that the reopening plan be amended to indicate that the plan will be reviewed, revised as deemed appropriate based on current health conditions and presented to the board for approval following each academic quarter. Is there a second? Second, Mac. Ms. Hen, if you could quickly speak to your motion, we do have a, um, a number of board members that want to speak, so. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Um, given the rapidly changing status of health conditions in the state and Baltimore County, this um, footnote to the plan would um, provide for the revisiting of the plan um, as those health conditions change and would ensure that the board is kept um, current and would hold us accountable for um, revisiting the plan as needed. Um, I would just ask Dr. Williams if you have a comment. So thank you, um, <clears throat> Madam Chair. Um, what's being requested is the work of the staff. Currently, when we were closed, we were visit revisiting our plan and so there's an assumption that's being made. I just want to clarify, this is the work that we'll be doing all year to look at how the, what kind of progress we're making um, with my request to begin this first semester uh, with virtual instruction. Thank you. As Dr. you recall, as you recall, I provided board members updates during the closure beginning March 16th. Yes. And thank, thank you. you for that. Some of the, the feedback that I received from my constituents um, was concern that January is a long time away and they wanted reassurance that we were looking at the plan and specifically that the board will revisit the plan and would be kept up to um, date on the school system's actions and responsiveness in response to current health conditions and that we would be revisiting that, particularly following the first academic quarter and looking at the effectiveness of instruction following the first quarter, and that if any adjustments had to be made, that those could be made. So what is being requested here is that the board could be could do a, check, a checkpoint following the first academic quarter. Thank you. Other board members discussion? Ms. Pasture, and then I see uh, three others. Go ahead, Ms. Pasture. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Causey. Um, one, I just came out of a meeting, so I haven't had an opportunity. I understand that there are motions, but um, I agree with Dr. Williams along the way uh, from March right up to uh, our last committee meeting and board meeting. Um, staff always presented to us uh, the updates. There were a number of things that were changed along the way, both in terms of packets, in terms of teacher-generated um, plans, a number of things that changed as a result of them continuously uh, scrutinizing. And I'm just held remembering that we're the what. And albeit, I think that the the idea 
uh, that Ms. Hen presents is a valid one. I still see that as the how, and that is a staff um, uh, duty as opposed to, and they've always brought it back to the board as something on which we need to be most. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. If I could, um, Dr. Williams, if you would mind rereading your statement, which is the motion that's on the floor, and then I'll have Julie reread her amendment uh, so it's clear what amendment is on the floor. Dr. Williams? Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, members of the board, this evening I'm requesting board approval to engage students in virtual instruction for this coming school year, 2021 school year, beginning September 8, 2020, through the end of the first semester on January 29, 2021. Thank you. Ms. Hen, if you could quickly restate your amendment. Yes, I move that the reopening plan be amended to indicate that the plan will be reviewed, revised as deemed appropriate based on current health conditions and presented to the board for approval following each academic quarter. Thank you. And now Ms. Joes is next. I believe Dr. Hager was before me if you want to go. Um, I can wait. I think she had her hand up before. Can me. you hear me? Okay, yes. Ms. Hager. Excuse me, Dr. Hager. I uh, thank you. I actually uh, share Ms. Hen's concerns about the January 29th uh, potential in-person start date. So my question for for Dr. Williams is: Is that a hard line in the sand that we will not have any in-person learning prior to January 29th, or is there? any uh, fluidity in the plan that could allow for, should this pandemic improve, for an opportunity for there to be in-person learning for the students that need it the most? So thank you for that. In collaboration with our partners, particularly our health department, um, <clears throat> we, we know that there is flexibility and there will be flexibility. It's, it's in the plan. Um, the concern is that, as you heard today about our County executive announcement and the data that we're watching with the spikes, um, we felt it was safe to say a semester. However, if things change, we want to be flexible that if after a quarter and if it's safe to do so, we can make that change. But we wanted to just assure everyone, particularly our staff and our parents, to be prepared for a semester um, because in, in talking with the health department and there's um, the flu season um, that will be creeping up. And so uh, I don't know if it'll get better. So in the plan, we talked about flexibility, but in, in my statement, I felt it would be best to just say one semester and then to evaluate. It is my hope to have some kind of in faith, in a face to face or hybrid model for our students when it's safe to do so. And uh, just based on our work uh, with our partners, I felt the need to say for a semester. And I, I would just comment that, you know, January 29th is over five months from now. If we think backwards over five months ago, we, we weren't, school, school was still in session. So it's just so long is my, my concern. And that's why I, I, uh, I do uh, agree with Ms. Hen and her motion to, to reevaluate formally midway through this, through the semester. So I, I would just like to respond. The staff and I will be reevaluating. And again, this is a health pandemic, and we really take allow the, the health experts to kind of take the lead. Um, what she did say was about the approval process. Again, if it's safe to bring kids back and we have staff to, to actually welcome them back, we will look at ways um, to accommodate them. So I'm just, I'm, I'm pushing back slightly on this approval process each quarter. We will continue to provide updates to the board. And again, we will make some recommendations and have options for our families, because that's the other um, concern that I have. Even if it's safe to do so, we may have some family members and some students uh, for a variety of reasons may opt out and, and returning face to face. But I appreciate your, your question and thank you so much. Yeah. Ms. Joes. Thank you. Um, Dr. Williams, if you could elaborate, because 
you know, we're looking at CDC data and I'm looking at what NIH and the experts are saying uh, and what the county executive just said. So it looks like we are going the wrong way in terms of the trend. And I have had a lot of parents reach out to me that clearly want their kids in school. And me as a working mom, I would love to have my kids in school, but there is the um, global pandemic, which is unprecedented that none of us have, you know, uh, lived through. And my concern is the semester ends in January and the quarter that Ms. Hen is talking about ends, I believe, October or is it November? And I don't know if that's enough time for people to be ready and turn around and go back to school right before um, the winter holidays, if you may. Uh, so for me, in terms of stability for the teachers, for the parents, um, it makes more sense to follow your guidelines to evaluate it uh, October, November, or like you said, December, do a survey with the parents and stakeholders. Um, but, you know, in case things get better, then maybe we can open, but I would rather err on the side of caution on this one um, and parents be prepared for some kind of long-term care, uh, especially, you know, parents with younger children like me and other parents. Um, that's why I think I'm more apt to not approve, uh, not vote for this amendment. I'm going to go with your recommendation of um, reviewing it in December. If I may just respond, thank you, Ms. Jones, for that. Um, if you're following some of the colleges, um, <clears throat> they are starting to look at their plans and I'm actually dealing with a incoming college student that even you raise the interesting point, our, our quarter in November the, just lost the date, November the 13th, and that still may be too soon um, to make a decision, although some of the colleges are actually sending their, their students home if they're going away, if they're even opening face-to-face. Uh, -face. They're sending their, their students home um, in November. Um, so, you know, the plan is always to, to update the board um, as I have done before. And to your point, we may not know, uh, have too much information about what's happening in our, in our county when it comes to this pandemic. But, if, you know, if we see some progress, you know, we can always revisit. Um, but to your point, I think November may still be too soon um, and hence why I was requesting a first semester virtual instruction. Thank you. Thank um, you, Dr. Williams. So um, are there other board members that have not spoken that would like to speak to this amendment to the motion? Okay, hearing none, Julie, did you have your hand raised again? Yes, I just wanted to make the comment that the importance of this motion is to implement a checkpoint, not specifically this specific timing, but to Dr. Hager's point, the end of January is a long time away. And what is key here is to implement that checkpoint, regardless of the timing. And I would be open to um, an amendment to my motion that recommends a different um, interval or a different time frame, if that would be more appropriate. And I know the pandemic doesn't follow an academic calendar. That's silly to suggest that it would. So if there's a more appropriate checkpoint or timing of that, then I would be open to revising my motion accordingly, if someone would like to suggest that. But I do think we, we still need to um, revisit this. And I do think that the board needs to um, be involved in the process because this is five months away. We're talking about half of a school year and we we need to revisit this before we let half of a school year go by. Thank you. May I ask for some clarification? Uh, Mr. Mahamza, yes, go ahead. You have not yet spoken, go ahead. Yeah, um, based on what Dr. Williams was saying and this uh, amend, uh, this motion, it, aren't, isn't it basically the same thing? Because Dr. Williams did mention that there are basically looking at it and revising as the health conditions um, change. So what it, what is what exactly does this motion do? Because it, it, it seems like Dr. Williams uh, agrees and is uh, basically saying that 
he will revisit and will be uh, advising the, the board uh, to any changes. I'm just confused a little bit. Ms. Hen, can you clarify? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Mahamza. My motion um, moves to amend the plan itself to include Dr. Williams' statement that the plan will be reviewed and revised as deemed appropriate, but it also includes that the board will be involved in that process and that it will be brought forth to the board with any changes that Dr. Williams deems appropriate based on the current health conditions. And it recognizes that those conditions are changing daily and that what the board approves today may not be um, accurate or may not reflect the health condition three months from now. And it okay. establishes a, a process by which the board would revisit the plan if any changes are made at that next checkpoint. Thank you for your okay, question. So it's basically like, okay, sorry. It's basically like a formality for what Dr. Williams uh, stated. It establishes another approval in the mm -hmm. <clears throat> that health conditions change and it establishes an, a checkpoint for the board to revisit the plan knowing that health conditions change and that our response okay. may need to change. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is Ms. Scott. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not on video, so I can't raise my hand. Um, yes, Ms. Scott. Thank you so much. Um, I was just curious, um, as I'm listening to it, um, Dr. Williams, um, it sounds like your plan was fluid and that you were going to be updating us. What was your calendar, your timeline that you had in mind to update the board just as you went along or, or what did you already have in, um, in mind? So uh, thank you, Ms. Scott, for that question. And so if you kind of reflect on what happened with the first closure, we, we I was providing updates to the board actually on a weekly basis uh, where we were providing uh -huh. numbers of um, the meals. We were providing the number of kids who were engaged. So we tried to provide as much information so um, the board was just informed in the progress. And so, <clears throat> You know, I can continue um, that practice um, because it, it sounds like, and I, I understand, let me also just put out there, a, a semester is a long time, um, but that's our work in terms of the staff to working with our school leaders uh, to, to make sure we're monitoring and make sure that if there are some loopholes that we follow up and so I was just going to continue the practice that I used before. Um, and with this whole plan, granted it is is fluid, we, we just don't know. We may have to go longer based on the health um, pandemic, I'm not sure. So it was just being safe to look at a whole semester. And, and one other thing I just wanna raise, the unions um, have actually reached out and, and their desires to, to make sure the staff uh, members are equipped on one modality. Um, <clears throat> and so um, we got a lot of moving parts and the flexibility has to be there. We all have to be flexible, but that was just my thinking. I'm sorry, that was just my thinking around updating the board. And any time I think it's incumbent upon me to share what the health conditions are that may cause us to do something differently. And for me, this is what's driving this decision, not, not just because I wanna want to do this, it's just the collaboration and what we are seeing happening, I think is the best decision that we have because we wanna make sure everyone is safe. So Dr. Williams. And, and so that was just my question as far as, um, just to follow up on that. My, my question was just as far as you mentioned flexibility. I'm, I'm just curious um, with this, um, uh, uh, Julie's um, addition, if that would add an extra level of bureaucracy and push the board into the operations of the school system. Because it sounds like this is more of now the board being involved, as, as Ms. Hen said, in the operations. And um, you all are the experts and, and the health department and, and others who you work with. and. Um, I, I, I just am 
just a little concerned about the board inserting itself in operations when there are experts and people there who are who are already doing those. And I don't want to create an extra layer that could then cause us to either operate more slowly or or, or something like that. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Scott. Dr. Williams, I wanted to ask a clarifying uh, statement. I haven't spoken to the amendment yet. Um, I think it might be helpful to step back and understand the exact framework of your request for approval from the board, which is to uh, have virtual learning start September 8th and then continue through the end of um, this, the first semester. Um, but in your recovery plan, so what we're not, we are not voting on the page by page um, reopening plan, is that correct? So what you have in front of you is the draft plan. Um, it is not my intention to have the board to vote on each page of the um, reopening plan. There's a lot there, um, and, but yet it's speaking to what we know now with the understanding that may have some clarity about certain things, particularly what the state superintendent may uh, announce at any time. Um, things about extracurricular activities and athletics. So um, we're not voting page by page. The only thing I'm requesting is that first semester be virtual instruction. Um, that's the only thing I'm requesting. And, and again, I want to emphasize it. I will continue the practice of updating the board about how things are going with our virtual learning. Yes, and thank you for that. And, I, and, and what we've heard is the need for um, the school system to be able to plan based on what's known and not what will be changing. So if, in fact, their things do improve or there are, um, and there is the opportunity for in-person instruction, whether it's um, a larger groups, rotation, that can still be considered um, while we have also heard from a great number of teachers and parents that they would like to know that the virtual option will continue to be available because of um, health concerns and other specific concerns. So even if you were able to modify things based on current health conditions, medical experts, uh, MSDE, and so forth, that virtual option would st still be available through the end of the semester. So. It's not as if the board is asking to vote after the first quarter to take away the virtual instruction. Is that this is Mr. Offerman? A Mr. fair Offerman? statement. Uh, yes, I'm just asking Dr. Williams a question, and then we I'm can waiting continue. for a response. Yes. Okay. Thank so, you. <clears throat> so what we're saying is we're going to have some flexibility. If you're talking, you're. I maybe I misunderstood what you said. That. If family members would like to continue with virtual instruction after after the first semester, I think just like anything, we would have to look at um, those those requests because there's still some underlying health issues for our, our students as well as staff, and so we're going to have to work with those families to provide that kind of support if families want to continue that. Um, the only thing I'm just questioning is the timing. Again, for each quarter, I think I can still provide the board updates about how things are going, um, as well as the recommendations from the health department in terms of what's happening in our in our county. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Yeah, I would I would like to uh, I would like to uh, move the question, please. Second. Uh, there's been a motion to call the vote and a second, so it requires a two-third vote. Ms. Gover, um, can you do a roll call vote? Dr. Hager? No. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Mahomza? No. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? 
No. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? I just want to make sure we're voting on Ms. Hand's amendment, correct? Correct. Actually, to move that question, yes. Yeah, to move the question. No. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? I, I'm sorry, you, we're voting on Ms. Hen's uh, amendment or are we voting on to move uh, Mr. Offerman's move and second? We're, we're voting on Mr. Offerman's um, motion to move the question. Okay, yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. That's eight in favor. Thank you. The motion carries to call the vote. So we are now going to call the vote on Ms. Hen's amendment, uh, moving that the reopening plan be amended to indicate the plan will be reviewed, revised as deemed appropriate based on current health conditions and present it to the board for approval following each academic quarter. Can you do a roll call vote, please? Dr. Hager? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pester? No. Mr. Offerman? No. Mr. Mahomsa? No. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? No. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Max? Yes. Ms. Scott? No. Ms. Rowe? No. Motion fails. Thank you. Miss um, Hen, you had additional uh, information that you sent earlier. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the reopening plan be amended to indicate that BCPS will survey all stakeholders following each academic quarter of virtual instruction in order to use feedback to promote continuous improvement. Is there a second? Second, Roe. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Oh, yes. excuse me, Ms. Hen, do you want to speak uh, to your motion? Oh. I'm sorry, Ms. Hen, can you speak to your motion? Yes, I would. I'm particularly interested in feedback um, from our parents of special education students who have been very vocal in expressing their concerns regarding virtual instruction and the ability of BCPS to deliver services effectively um, for those students. And I believe we need um, regular feedback from those families as to how we're doing in that um, sense particularly, but feedback from all of our families as to how this is going and that we should be using that feedback to drive continuous improvement. Thank you. Ms. Jones. Thank you. Um, so Dr. Williams' uh, plan does have a survey December 1st to 18. BCPS will survey families. If safe to do so, families will have the option to continue virtual learning. I hear your concerns about uh, special education, but my concern is if you start school in September and then you do two back-to-back -back survey, it's going to be lost. Um, maybe that should be another motion on, on specifically targeting special education kids and kids that are, are falling behind just that section. Because I know as a parent, when I get too many surveys, um, it inundates me. So I would rather get one survey in December and answer that as Dr. Williams already has that in his plan. So I don't see the redundancy in this. So. Board members, is there other discussion? Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, wait, Dr. my Hager? hand was, my hand Sorry. was, uh, my virtual hand was up. I see. Okay, Ms. Pasture. And then is Ms. Hager, is your hand up? Okay, Ms. Pasture. I, thank you. Uh, I, I agree with um, uh, Ms. Hand, Mrs. Hand, that we want to take a look at our children with special needs and those who are beginning in March and maybe even before that fell, fell behind and are in need uh, along the way. 
Um, where I am concerned is, again, I'd, I'd hate to put a date to, to that. I would hope that our school administrators and teachers and people in central office are doing the jobs uh, that they have always been doing and they are paying close attention to that and are reaching out in that this is real instruction as opposed to a half an hour and um, uh, 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 just sort of piecemealing. Um, so again, I see it as the how. I understand the sentiment, but I would like um, not even to get to a December survey. I would want to know that this is ongoing work as would be happening uh, for our children, even if we were live. Thank you, Ms. Hager. I also shared the concern that December may be too late to survey the parents, um, given how the spring uh, online learning went. I know that the fall is gonna be very vastly different than it was in the spring, but, um, but I do worry that, that that's too long of a period. So I don't know if Dr. Williams has other modalities in place to ensure that there is feedback earlier on in the process um, so that this motion might not be necessary, but, um, but I, I'm just curious if Dr. Williams has any feedback, again, particularly for those, those children who have been unengaged or underengaged in the spring. Dr. Williams. Sure, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> the survey uh, that Ms. Joe spoke to was a late survey, but it was about continuing um, and desires of families if they needed to continue. But, you know, I, I want to go back and say all of our administrators and our teachers um, have, have been concerned about our kids. And, and so we're, we're not going to rely on a survey to see if we're, if we're working, if things are working or not. That's the work that we do. That's the work of administrators. That's the work of our, of our staff. We, we can make sure we are focusing on the students who are receiving services, whether it's our ESOL students, whether it's our uh, special ed students, but also a group of students who it may have been at risk before, um, as well as those who were disengaged. In addition to that group, we also want to make sure that our kids are having uh, rigorous instruction and that our kids in honors and AP and GT are being serviced as well. So we don't get that feedback from a survey. We get that from the work that we do uh, with our communities and with our families. And that's the work that the school staff will continue to do. The way in which we go about doing it um, will have to be different. Um, but it, I just can't rely on a survey to get that kind of information. It has to be real time. It has to be specific to an environment or school setting so the staff can continue to support students. So um, we will come up with ways to make sure there's that checks and balancing that's happening. Um, I just don't think a survey is gonna provide that kind of data. We wanna make sure if a student is not being successful that we're able to pivot and do some things immediately for, 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 for the students. And that's the work that our school staff will be doing, and that's the work that central office will be supporting our schools. Thank you. And I have um, Ms. Mack and... Um... Okay, um, I just wanted to say that, while I appreciate everything Dr. Williams just said, um, I do support this motion because I think we need to realize that not all parents will speak up. Not all parents are on social media and not all parents are willing to send emails to the board um, or to your staff, Dr. Williams. And I think we do need to get information. Um, I know there are limitations in surveys, but I think we need to get real-time information from the people impacted by the decisions we make, and those are the parents. Um, I fully support starting remotely. I've said that many, many times, but I also have parents telling me I don't know how I'm going to do it because I have to work full time. So I do think that having a, a, a checkpoint in place that will provide us 
with real-time feedback is needed because we may have to, of course, looking at the, the spread of the disease and things like that, we may have to shift what we're doing because what, what we're proposing might be untenable for parents. Madam Thank Chair, you, board members. Madam Chair, board members. This is, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I just want to emphasize what we realize <clears throat> that we have to make a shift in how we um, get our parents involved and connect with our parents. And I'm just saying a survey is one way. I don't think it's going to be the best way in terms of if the student is not being successful or if we're not meeting the needs. Again, school will still be in session. There are still staff. There are still our counselors, our PPWs, our system principals, our principals. And so I, I'm, I'm just saying there needs to be some flexibility to allow the school to do its work, to work with families and the students, particularly those who may be struggling. And, and, and I'm just saying that at this point, we will look at a different way of getting that feedback and we have our executive directors and community superintendents who've been supporting our schools. It's just the matter in which we get that feedback needs to be different than survey whether a student is being successful or not during this type of virtual instruction. Thank you. Are there other board members that have not yet spoken to uh, this motion? Because I would uh, remind the board that we have um, um, yes, Ms. Harvey. That we have additional timing. So, I Ms. Just wanted to, I just wanted to say that where I see the value of this survey is that quite often I've noticed, even with the best of issues, where we've had great communication and great stakeholder buy-in and everything, we still sometimes have situations where the board decides something or the school system decides something, and there is a disconnect between what the board is hearing from staff in our meetings and what the public is reporting to the board through email, social media, telephone calls, and every other avenue. And I think given the fact that this is such a brand new thing we're doing, that where I see the value of the survey is to see if the perception of the staff in the school system of what the public thinks of where the pitfalls and um, or great things that we're doing are, could be determined in a survey so that if improvements need to be made, we can make those improvements as quickly as possible because there may be elements that staff aren't thinking of that may come out in the course of a survey or other discussions on social media. And it's one more way to make sure that Lily, you muted yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. So you didn't hear any of that? We heard all of it except the last five seconds. So if you could just oh, say the last just five seconds. This survey provides a way for us to understand what the public thinks and what they're experiencing so that there's consistency between what the staff is reporting to the board of what the public is experiencing and that the public gets to tell us what they're experiencing firsthand. Thank you. Are there any board members that want to speak that have not yet spoken to this? Okay, anyone else before we vote, please? Pas Ms. Pasture. Ms. Pasture. Oh, thank you, Ms. Causey. This is not about not having a survey. You are saying, Dr. Williams, you're going to have a survey. My understanding is that you will have your survey, but this is real school. This isn't filling in the gaps, waiting every two weeks to see what the super state superintendent is going to do. This is new learning. This is moving forward learning, which means um, teachers and administrators and counselors will be ongoing, giving feedback that we will have a mid-quarter report that we are going to do this as we would real school. And then there's a survey to get a sense of 
how our stakeholders are feeling. I need to understand, is that what you're saying? That was my understanding, but I want to make sure before we vote that I am saying what you're saying. So thank Jack you, Williams. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. Um, what Ms. Joe's reference was a statement in the draft reopening plan that spoke to a survey in December about moving forward. But you raise an interesting point. We are, this is still school. There are, you know, the work that staff will have to do. There are, of course, you know, parent teacher conferences, IEP progress reports. Um, middle school team meetings, the work will continue. And so whether we do a survey or not, the staff will continue to monitor just like we would do if we were in a building to see how our students are doing and then work with the student and family to provide some support. So okay. I, I just want to just echo what you just said. It is still the work that will continue um, starting September 8th and the staff members will do the work that they have been accustomed, particularly those uh, staff members that are supporting students who are not doing well. We can Thank always you. give feed we can always give feedback and folks are not afraid of emailing or putting things on social media. So the feedback is going to happen with or without a survey. I'm just saying we are still going to use our mode of operation when when students are not being successful because we want the schools to turn around and make some change versus us looking at aggregate data and not knowing who's who. Um, so I just, I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Okay, and the survey I, I do see is worthwhile at the end, as long as we are still having real school. Thank you. Thank you, you. and that. we've had good discussion. So if we could uh, have, a, have the vote, please. Wait, Madam Chair, I had a Excuse question. Excuse me? I had a question. Um, Mr. Mahamza? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was a question for Dr. Williams or staff. Um, can you speak to, uh, could you describe how a survey is made um, and all the logistics that goes into that? Are you referring to the one we're planning to give in December? No, like I the ones that you already had. Um, can you talk about like how it's created and the work that goes into it. So, um, we, we asked our Department of Research Accountability and Assessment um, to design questions to get feedback um, for, our, for our parents. And we try to design the questions where um, they're not leading questions to kind of keep it open-ended. Uh, we did that when we uh, were talking about the three options around opening of school and the amount of data that we received. Um, that then is then collected by the Office of, of Research Accountability and Assessment. They do an analysis. We provided that data, uh, for an example, in the draft reopening plan. Uh, we disaggregated by parent, student, parent caregiver, student, and teacher. Um, sometimes we can drill down and get to grade level. Um, the data will be helpful just to get a snapshot um, uh, in terms of how we're doing, um, but we have to look at a different way of getting that data, uh, looking at grades, parent conferences, if we really want to see how students are performing um, than a survey. So the current survey that we've used was a real, really around the reopening options. Um, but we do rely on our experts that uh, work in the Division of Research Accountability and Assessment. Um, so basically mine was like a rhetorical question that um, it takes a bit of time to produce a, a survey. Is that correct? It's not like it, you, it takes a couple minutes to produce a survey. It takes a bit of uh, work to do it, right? It takes some time because again, it depends on what we're trying to ask and whether we give options or the format. So that it's it, it's not a one night overnight kind of production. It takes some time. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, and th that's basically what I'm trying to get at. That I understand what board members are talking about. That we have to get input from parents, especially uh, parents of special needs, parents who have been affected severely with uh, the pandemic. But if our goal is to use a survey to get that input, I, I feel like it's really counterproductive because, as we've seen in previous surveys, it it doesn't Amen. really uh, get the input of all the students. Um, it just gets uh, sometimes it's not even secure where one person, a, a group of people get together and put as much uh, information, like I, I'm, I'm referencing the calendar uh, survey we had a couple of years ago where uh, people just chose um, for a post Labor Day start. So um, it's not really getting a holistic perspective of all students. Um, I would rather um, have a surveys done like Dr. Williams said, where it's in school, um, teachers and guidance counselors and all the personnel workers are getting data uh, in schools because this is not comprehensive at all. And that's my only comment at all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, board members. We've had a lot of discussion, so hearing nothing further. Ms. Gover, can you call the vote, please? Dr. Hecker. Can we have Ms. Han's amendment read again, please? Ms. Han, please read your amendment. Yes. I move that the reopening plan be amended to indicate that BCPS will survey all stakeholders following each academic quarter of virtual instruction in order to use feedback to promote continuous improvement. Thank you. Ms. Gover, can you call the vote? Dr. Hager? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? No. Mr. Offerman? No. Mr. Mahomsa? No. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? No. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? No. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Seven in favor. Thank you, the motion carries. Ms. Hen, did you have other uh, comments or questions or? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the reopening plan be amended as follows. Virtual instruction will now provide live instruction with teachers every school day, Monday through Friday for every course. Is there a second? Russ Kuhn, second. You, Ms. Hen, may you speak to the motion? Sure. The current plan calls for live instruction with teachers every day with the exception of Wednesday. And this motion calls for that live instruction every day um, as currently is provided in an in-person environment. It's important that we maintain the um, quality and quantity of instruction in a virtual environment that we provide in an in-person environment. And this motion ensures that students will receive live instruction with teachers every school day. Thank you. Board members, if you wish to yeah. speak, can you um, put the raise your hand thing up? I'm gonna clear them after every um, topic is covered. So Mr. Mahamza. Yeah, this was the motion I was going to vote no on. Um, based, uh, and I want to reference the superintendent's plan. Um, the reason why Wednesday is off, uh, and which I, I think it's a great idea, is because it leaves time for teachers to interact and uh, spend more time with students who need more support, uh, who have had, it, who had, who haven't had the same education experience as others. And um, if we are allowed, if we do um, virtual every day, it's too much work on the teacher and the students, especially high school students who sometimes have jobs um, and sometimes uh, might need that day off in the week to catch up on work. And I just think this will be too much on our students and teachers. Thank you. Ms. Joes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mahamza. You actually brought a good point out there that that day is needed for teachers and Dr. Williams has it in his plan. Uh, this is the day that the survey is not going to help uh, the ESOL children 
parents that don't speak English, they're not going to be taking surveys, nor are they in social media. But this is the day for the teachers to reach out to the kids that are falling between the cracks. And uh, no amount of survey is going to help people. You hear in social media are just social media people. The real core people you want to reach, the people that are working, that are struggling, that are uh, don't speak English, are the ones that would need that Wednesday for the teachers, the staff to reach out to them. So I will not support this amendment. Ms. Pasteur. Thank you, Ms. Pazzi. Um, again, I, I can appreciate the sentiment, but I worry because this is virtual. Um, and so I'm not going to repeat it. It's what Mr. Mahamsa already articulated in terms of being able to reach out and doing to do one on ones or small groups um, where necessary. But also, I am hopeful that embedded from what I read embedded uh, is in those Wednesdays is that there's some staff uh, development, professional development opportunities as well, because our teachers are going to have to learn some, some different skills, if you will, um, to do this vir virtually. I bet that not everyone will know how to do group work how to move to breakout sessions. So there might well, between now and September, be those professional development days. But I do believe that as teachers really get engaged in this, they're going to find that they are going to be in need of some extra supports. And I see Wednesday um, as that opportunity. And if you get somewhere down the road, you don't need it, okay. But I, I do think they need that kind of time to reach out to children and to also professional development. Thank you. Ms. Board Pazzi. members, I'm, uh, yes, this is Miss um, Mack. I have a, and I then have I also, a comment and a me. question. I'm sorry. Okay, just one, and I just want to point out I have Mr. Kuhn and Miss Rowe. And if that's not the case, please change your hand up icon. And I would remind board members that um, we have a lot to process to get through. Thank you. Ms. Mack. You know, I just wanted to say that when I looked at um, Dr. Williams' plan, um, I wasn't quite sure where I was with Wednesday because I support what Ms. Pasteur said about I know teachers need additional um, professional development. Many, many teachers have told me that. But I am concerned that in a normal day when kids are in school, in elementary school, for example, they get 2.5 hours of ELA, 80 minutes of math, and 30 minutes of um, other content. And our plan now is calling anywhere for two hours to 3.5 hours of live instruction just four days a week. So I guess my question to Dr. Williams is, you know, how will the success of the additional supports that we're going to put in place for students and the interventions that we're talking about occurring on Wednesday, how are they going to be measured and how will we know if those efforts are successful? So I just want to remind the board, this is the new normal and how we are looking at teaching and learning remotely. Um, and <clears throat> You're asking good questions about the metrics. Again, we're looking at success of our students and how they're doing. Um, and we have a new strategic plan to measure that. I also will say that in the plan, it speaks to that Wednesday as a day of intervention and opportunities for professional development. And so if you think about um, just the time uh, we wanted to break up and we chose Wednesday and that was some feedback that we received um, just like we talked about getting feedback from parents feedback as we were dealing with this virtual learning from September 16th to the end of the school year in terms of what the students needed as well as the staff and again like we've done before when we see opportunities to make some changes uh, we will make some changes in, in the delivery. Um, but we're opening school, but we're opening virtually, and it has to be a different approach. And so um, 
we'll continue to monitor like we've done before based on the feedback um, and make adjustments as we go along. But um, the plan, the question, the, the other question was around just the Wednesday. Um, keep in mind, we are still dealing with a health pandemic and, and that is the concern that folks have. We, we do know that there's some situations with families that were impacted more so than others or other communities. So we, we want to have that flexibility, but as I shared before, we'll continue to monitor <clears throat> if we need to make some changes like we've done um, during the first closure, we will do it with this opening. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Uh, Mr. Kuhn and then Ms. Farrell. Uh, thank you, Ms. Causey. Um, Dr. Williams, I have a question for you regarding the 180 days of instruction requirement that I believe, you know, when we talk about calendar, we're always hitting, targeting a certain day, a certain number of days. And my question would be, if not all students are receiving actual school on every Wednesday, then we sound as if there's a deficiency um, in, in what we're proposing here. So could you please just, um, provide uh, insight into how we count that um, those days slash hours and you know we're actually providing what's expected and necessary. So that day could be considered at where we provided asynchronous learning, which that day counted towards attendance. This is a this is a state board uh, decision about attendance, <clears throat> but I believe the way we uh, were successful this past year when we looked at um, the virtual learning. Um, we were able to utilize the asynchronous uh, learning as a teaching day and attendance uh, will be taken and we will just incorporate this as uh, a day in which students are doing independent work. If you recall those students with abbreviated schedules those students who have um, work experience um, where they go to school a half day, those students who attend CCBC. Um, and so we, we are, this is not new for us, um, but we would have to work with um, our state superintendent around the attendance um, and making sure our students are not penalized. And again, we've had this experience uh, when we closed back on March 16th and we had a continuity of learning where we had asynchronous learning taking place. Um, and then there was a waiver of the 180 days for students and several waivers for our students who were graduating. And so I, I think we'll be fine with the number of calendar days with um, advocating for this Wednesday of a day for uh, interventions, acresins, asynchronous learning, any kind of supports that students may need, and of course, um, some PD for our staff. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Ms. Rowe? Yes, I just have a question about page four. It says the children will receive instruction every day. Is that page incorrect? Ms. Rowe, uh, as Dr. Williams just stated, instruction can be synchronous or it can be asynchronous. So on the Wednesdays, there are some students that would be receiving small group synchronous instruction, but then there would be other asynchronous uh, instruction that was already provided. Is that correct, Dr. Williams? We, we are using synchronous and asynchronous to provide learning. And so I will have to go back and look at page four to see if there's a, a slight error in our draft. But we will consider that as learning as well. If students are getting additional support, small group or one-on-one, -on -one, that will cons be considered learning. I guess I just saw what was on page four in the draft is confusing because it doesn't mention Wednesday as being different from every other day. And it could be misleading. Thank you for that feedback. We'll go back and look at page four if that's not clear. 
Thank you. Other board members before we have the vote? Ms. Gover, can you call the vote, please? Dr. Hager? No. Mr. Kuhn? I'm sorry. Um, I'm confused, oh, and I'm going to have to ask a question. Um, if Dr. Williams is suggesting that that instruction is happening every day, then this motion is a moot point. It doesn't. It has no relevance or bearing on what we're talking about. So I'm not quite sure what we're trying to change at this point, based on our discussion. And I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't get to hit my hand, raise my hand fast enough to to extend the discussion. So. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. I believe I mean, Ms. we could Hens vote on the way, that. and then Dr. Williams would just do the plan as yeah. as it's laid out and say he has provided instruction every day. So, Mr. Kuhn, I think my motion. I can answer that for you. My motion provides for live instruction for all students every day. Whereas I believe Dr. Williams' plan includes live instruction for some students every day. So the plan, let me let me let me clarify that a little bit. We're having instruction on Wednesday is where we're having flexibility, where there will be asynchronous learning, which we provided this past spring, but it was also an opportunity for intervention and in small groups and also PD for staff. Dr. Williams, given your just uh, the Mr. Kuhn's question in your statement, would Wednesdays also be an opportunity for um, advanced placement teachers who typically have um, students that need more rigorous instruction um, and maybe more um, content heavy? Is that one of the flexibilities that you see being for Wednesday? Or is that is that still um, being considered? Well, um, you're getting into specific courses. I will just say at this point, um, <clears throat> Wednesday is a day to support students and we can use it with asynchronous learning and it may involve what you're requesting. It may involve students who need additional support. Um, at this point, since it's still in draft, we want to fine tune that. But I don't, <clears throat> to have live instruction five days a week, we felt it was necessary to provide some opportunities for a day of intervention and support as well as giving our staff some additional support because we're doing virtual learning. So we, we developed this flexibility uh, to help both our students and, and staff. Thank you for that clarification. So Ms. Gover, I'm just gonna ask you to start the vote over, please. Dr. Hager? No. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasteur? No. Mr. Offerman? No. Mr. Mahonza? No. Ms. Hem? Yes. Ms. Causey? No. Ms. Jose? No. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Mack? No. Ms. Scott? No. Ms. Rowe? No. Thank you. Ms. Gover, what was the count? It was seven, it was two, um, ten. So the motion fails. Uh, Ms. Hen, did you have an, I believe you had um, additional comments that you sent in ahead of time? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the reopening plan be amended as follows. During virtual instructions, teachers may request permission to teach or complete other work from their assigned classrooms on a scheduled or as needed basis. Requests will be reviewed by school administrators. Second, Lisa Matt. Ms. Hen, speak to your motion, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Based on the feedback of teachers, particularly those in areas such as culinary arts, the sciences, 
and other areas requiring um, specialized equipment, um, they have requested permission to be able to teach from their classrooms. This motion would allow that they be able to do so with permission from their school administrators. Okay, um, board members, any discussion? Ms. Causey. Yes. yes. Mr. Ms. Jones. Thank you. Um, Dr. Williams, this question is for you. It seems like at this point, the board is going to do operations. This is up to you, is up to your um, administration to decide when and how would be an appropriate time for teachers to go in. And I get what Ms. Hen is saying. It is important for some of the teachers to go back to, to um, their classrooms and, and that we may have, you know, you, not we, you will have to work towards based on proper health guidelines, how you go about that. So what is your take on this motion? Thank you, Ms. Joes. I do recognize that when we first closed, it was difficult for staff because it was a quick turnaround. The plan is to provide opportunities to staff to have the materials um, available so they can do the work remotely. Um, I'm not sure. Um, well, based on, let me not say I'm not sure. Based on the data, um, staff is somewhat split about coming into the building uh, to work. Again, for these specialty classes, I think we have to have that flexibility. Um, but as I shared with a group of people this morning, I shared, you know, every time someone comes into the building, uh, we have to know who's in the building. We have to maintain social distancing, make sure they have the equipment um, that they need. If there's a small group, we're going to have to make sure they're, they're masked. And then our building service workers are going to have to clean and sanitize after any use of, of space. Um, because if folks are coming back into the building, we got to make sure uh, it is prepared and ready. And so, although I understand the need, I th again, I think that's our work in trying to make sure our, our principals will let us know. Uh, and again, folks are not afraid of letting us know uh, how things are working in their particular school. And I think that's the important part, that we have some unique programs. We will work with our staff uh, to accommodate their needs. Um, <clears throat> but I think every school might be different. And based on our data, um, I'm hearing that there are folks who uh, don't want to come back or are afraid to come back for a variety of reasons. And so we will work with our staff um, to make sure if they need to come in, we will have to schedule that in so we know who's coming and going into our buildings if we have this opening or first semester virtual learning. So um, that's a part of our work. And so I just want to reference that, Ms. Joes. We, we're not going to just turn it over and just not monitor. We will monitor and support. And if, if something, if, if there's a need, again, the unions are not afraid of letting us know. We have a great partnership with them. And if things are not working, they will let us know and we will um, address it appropriately. Um, so I just think that's, that's the work of our principals with our guidance of what we can do if there are these specialty courses or or teachers that may need access to some equipment that they may not be able to uh, take with them at home. So again, that's our work. So Ms. thank you, Dr. Williams, for answering that. So I'm going to leave the operations to you and vote no on this amendment. Ms. Causey. I see Mr. I'm, I, is that Ms. Mack? Yes. OK, I'll let you go. And then um, I see Mr. Kuhn. I appreciate Ms. Hen talking about specialty teachers like culinary, but I do also, uh, I've had quite a few teachers contact me about the option of teaching from their classroom. And when I worked at Verizon, I had the opportunity to work at home as much as I could, but I found that I wasn't efficient because I wasn't surrounded by the system that I had put in place to be successful. And I think that we do need to give consideration to allowing any teacher who wants to and can to come into the school to teach because many of our curriculum, some of our curriculum has manipulatives that need to be shown to the kids. Um, 
there's different things on the floor that teachers rely on, different things on the chalk ledge that teachers rely on. And I think, I, I think many of the teachers with whom I've spoken have said to me that they feel like they would be much more effective in their environment. But I do recognize what Dr. Williams is saying. I would not want this to be a mandate. I would want this to be an option. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. I would just focus on the fact that the motion is to provide flexibility. It is not a, a mandate or a requirement. It's to allow teachers that would have to feel um, confident that it's in their best interest to do that if they would like to. And it's fairly simple. So I believe that it adds flexibility and allows administrators to make decisions as to who goes in and out of buildings. So I will support this amendment. Thank you. Hi, this is Ms. Scott. Ms. I wasn't able to raise my hand, so I don't know if there's someone ahead of me. Yeah, I have my hand raised. Okay. Yeah, um, basically uh, what I was gonna say is that um, Dr. Williams already mentioned that he, he his staff and uh, and him himself has are allowing uh, these flexibilities um, based on what input they get from um, administrators, the unions, and various teachers. So I don't understand what this motion is going to do. Again, we're just getting into operations, and Dr. Williams has talked about him already, uh, his staff already um, answering this. So I just think this motion is useless again. <laughs> um. So, Ms. Scott, did you have your want to yeah. chime in? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, this is um, Makita Scott, and basically, what I was um, it sounds like um, again, like I said earlier, as, as the board, this is we're moving a little bit more so into operations, which is not an area I feel that um, we should be going into. It sounds like the Dr. Williams and them already have um, some operations in, in place. Um, it sounds like it's up to the principal and or the administrators, and that that's what they're already doing. Another concern I have also is, is as far as the health impact. This sounds like something that could also be uh, dangerous, possibly, if teachers are going in and out and it's not being properly sanitized and it's not scheduled, or I don't know. It just sounds like there could be some health risk associated with that, which also makes me a bit uncomfortable. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that, that we're considering all aspects of, of um, something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Can I speak to my motion? Yes, before we vote. Thank you. We, we often speak to um, our students' home environments and needing to recognize that our students come from a variety of home environments and needing to be sensitive to that. Our teachers also come from a variety of home environments and some do prefer to work from their classrooms rather than from their homes. Teachers I've spoken to speak to privacy. They speak to the fact that they don't necessarily want to broadcast from their bedrooms and for students to see their, their personal um, home environment when they go on Google Meets. They speak to the fact that they would prefer the professionalism of teaching from their classrooms. Um, for whatever reasons, they, this is their preference. And when we speak to things such as teacher retention, allowing them the freedom and the option, and again, to Mr. Kuhn's point, this motion doesn't make this a mandate. It gives them the option for oh, flexibility. For. I'm sorry, could we please all go on mute if we're not speaking? This is Ms. Scott. It sounds like it already is an option, though. Dr. Uh, Williams, Scott, I have a um, I'm not finished speaking. Excuse me, Ms. Scott. <laughs> Ms. Han, and then we, I can recognize you, Ms. Scott. Thank you. Ms. Han, if you can finish. Thank you. To my point, this, this motion allows for flexibility. It gives teachers an option and a benefit that is of little cost. It gives them an option when they have few, and it empowers them to teach our children the way they pr prefer to teach our children. Again, it is empowering, that is the spirit of the motion, to do so for teachers who feel safe to do so. It is not a mandate, 
And again, it allows for flexibility in a plan that does not afford them the flexibility to do so now. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, Ms. Scott, if you can go quickly, since you've spoken before, and then um, I believe Dr. Hager's hand is raised, who's not yet spoken to this motion. Ms. Scott? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, yes, and I think when we're talking about uh, health and COVID-19, I think that it deserves as much conversation. So um, I'm going to take the appropriate time necessary to um, ask my question. So um, what I am saying is, is I wanted to ask Dr. Williams, Dr. Williams, uh, it sounds like that's already an option and that this may be a form of redundancy. Um, if teachers want to go into their school and teach, what would be the process by which they would do that? Would they reach out to um, the principal, area superintendent? Would that be an option that would be given to them on a case-by-case -case basis? How would that work? So thank you, Ms. Scott. Uh, what we will just say is that our principals will develop schedules, you know, they too, um, we have to decide with our principals um, as well. Um, so it's just not, it's not the staff. I just, again, this is the work that we, again, had to think about <clears throat> when it came to March 16th. Um, we had some help that the schools and officers were closed, but we will work with our, with our teachers in terms of um, that, I just want to make sure there's almost an assumption that we're not going to uh, work with our staff to make sure they're doing their best and our kids are getting their best. And so as we work with each school, you know, if you think about the, our largest high school, um, it, several hundred staff members, you know, is it is it wise for all of them to come in? Probably not. Will we have to have a schedule? Absolutely. To our smallest elementary school, it still might not be wise for all of them to come up. We're going to have that flexibility uh, and work with our staff because their situations may be different. So the plan is in draft. Um, if we didn't provide that clarity as it was raised earlier about something else, we'll a page four, we'll go back and look at that. We'll go back and work with our unions to make sure we have that flexibility if, in fact, staff feel that they need to come into the to the building to actually uh, provide the virtual learning. But we but the, the struggle is going to be um, having all staff members in, in our large high schools or middle schools to return and then making sure that we you raise an interesting point. There is that contact tracing that um, throughout this semester, if folks are coming in the building, God forbid we have anybody who gets ill, but we have to do some contract tracing to know where they were, who's been in their contact in their environment. And so I'm not saying it's a no, but I'm saying the plan is going to be revised and we will provide some flexibility, but we have to work with our principals because every school is, is different and the setup in which rooms may be located may be different. So. Um, we're going to provide that flexibility. And again, we've learned a lot from this first closure and we'll continue um, to modify our plan based on our working relationships with the unions. Thank, thank you, Dr. So Williams. That, Dr. Excuse me, thank you so much for that, Dr. Williams. Um, I appreciate that. I just wanted to say it's one thing with comfort, and I've heard from uh, numerous teachers as well. However, what's utmost important is the health of our schools, of our children, of our teachers, of our parents. And so I am glad that that is the guiding light that you all are using when making all of your decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you. I saw someone with their hand up and now it's down with Dr. Hager. Did you have your hand up to speak or no? Um, Dr. Or Ms. Scott uh, asked a similar question, so it's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, I had not yet spoken to the motion and I would like to say that I um, appreciate Dr. Williams um, discussing the flexibility and I do want to say to all the board members, not about just this issue, but about every other issue, is the reason for the um, special meeting tonight is to um, for the board to approve the foundational issue of school starting and being and starting fully virtual so that Dr. Williams and his team 
can continue the work that they've been doing, fully focused on implementing the best virtual uh, education that they can provide for the children. And so the reopening plan that is attached to board docs does have draft stamped all over it, specifically because they are continuing the work. So I am um, grateful to hear Dr. Williams say that they are considering uh, teachers coming into the buildings, that there will be a process, um, that the principals will be involved. Um, so while I agree with um, Julie's sentiment and a lot of the discussion that's happening here, um, I, I won't be supporting that motion. Are there any other board members that would like to speak before we do a roll call vote? Ms. Gover? Dr. Hager? No. Mr. Kim? Yes. Ms. Pasture? No. Mr. Offerman? No. Mr. Mahomsa? No. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? No. Ms. Jost? No. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? No. Ms. Rowe? No. What is the tally? It's 4-8. Four, 4 in favor okay. of the motion fail. Okay, the motion does not carry. Also earlier today, um, Dr. Hager had sent in questions. So Ms. Hen, if you're finished, then I will I have, have Dr. Hager. I have one last motion. Ms. Causey? Okay. Dr. I, Hager will be back to you. Okay. I'll make it brief. I move that the reopening plan be amended to include guidance around school and extracurricular activities in a virtual environment to include resources for student leaders, volunteer organizations, and school administrators. Is there a second? Second. Mamza. Thank you. Ms. Hen, would you speak to your motion, please? Sure. Thank you, Mrs. Causey. Um, while the plan does include information on social emotional learning, and I appreciate that, and it does begin to address extracurricular activities, I would like to see more information around how of the continu continuity of school and extracurricular activities. I believe those are absolutely critical for our students um, as they move to virtual instruction and would like to see particular resources for student leaders about how they can maintain their clubs activities, how volunteer organizations such as PTAs um, can maintain their activities and how school administrators can continue their school spirit activities. And I believe there's a lot of resources we can provide as a school system um, to assist in that. Thank you. I have a comment. Thank you. Um, discussion? I have a comment. Yeah, Ms. Josh. Oh, Mr. Mahumza, yes, you second it. Yeah, um, I understand what Ms. Han is saying. Again, uh, I believe everything is needed, but when reading through the draft form, um, it explicitly says that more details will be forthcoming. And like you mentioned, this is still the draft. Um, we're just voting on the structure of reopening the virtual um, virtually. Uh, obviously, I want to. Uh, obviously, I want to understand what's going to happen with sports uh, being an athlete myself. So, um, the plan is still in draft form, um, so I don't really understand why we're making these motions, which are a bit redundant. Um, yeah. So thank you. I see Miss Joe's hands up. Thank you, Miss Causey. Um, Dr. Williams, you do have that in your draft reopening plan about athletics and extracurricular activities and uh, you know as parents we all want our kids to be active and go out there but even professional sports has been canceled for us to force this and not really wait for data to come and wait for um, more guidance i think it's premature and i'm going to vote no on this and let you dr williams um, determine when's a good time and bring bring it back to the board as the time is appropriate thank you I don't see any other hands up. Are there other board members that are calling in that would like to speak? Mrs. Crosby, Ms. may I clarify my motion? Uh, yes. With an example, 
So if there are um, club moderators, for instance, when I mentioned student leaders, I'm, I'm looking for resources here that they could use to, for instance, run their own Google Meets. To be able to, when I mentioned continuity of activities, it's how can they do so in a virtual environment? So that while the plan mentions that and mentions the importance of it, I believe it's important to be able to provide resources to assist students, to assist parent organizations, to assist school administrators with how to maintain the continuity Ms. Hen, you oh. have been muted. Those are, I'm not sure when I was cut off. What I was stating was that I believe it's important for the board to state that school and extracurricular activities are important to the mental health of our students and that we need to provide resources to our student leaders, our volunteer organizations, and our school administrators on how to maintain the continuity of those activities when we start in a virtual um, when we start back virtually. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hager. So it seems like this motion is more about um, other extracurricular activities and not sports. Um, and I don't recall seeing a lot about that in the plan. I don't know if Dr. Williams could comment on kind of where, where their thinking is with respect to clubs and other activities outside of sports, which is a question I have separately from this. So um, <clears throat> this is a tough one because um, we know that this past spring, I, I'm sorry, put my face on. We know that uh, this past spring, our schools were doing some very creative things remotely and um, to really promote school spirit, to really connect. Um, and so this is one of these things that we're going to have to work through around the extracurricular and athletics is the same way um, we're waiting to hear from the maryland public schools ps ssa in terms of athletics but <clears throat> right now with the schools um, being closed and the offices are being closed um, this is going to be a tough one again we know that the well-rounded student is important um, and, and actually the state holds us accountable and we want our kids to be involved. This just what the extracurricular activities would look like. Uh, I'm not quite sure at this time. And again, that's why in the plan, you know, additional details and information will be forthcoming because there's so many unknowns, but we've learned, I will say kudos to our teachers and our principals for this past uh, spring that they really were very creative in what they were doing with, with students. And so um, more information will have to come around the extracurricular activities. I did have a question about sports. Should I ask that now or should we wait and let the motion over? Dr. Hager, I think that we should process this, uh, this motion and then gotcha. uh, we can address your uh, thing. And I know that you sent it in earlier today. so. You will be next. Um, Ms. Hen, I just wanted to clarify that when you're speaking to um, guidance <clears throat> and resources, you're not, um, that does not uh, dictate that it's in person. I mean, you're, Correct. your guidance Correct. and resources could be all virtual if that's what's determined um, by Dr. Williams and his team and the principals to be the safest way forward. Is that correct? Yes, and I'm happy to restate my motion, but it specifically states in a virtual environment. Okay, thank you. Other board members with um, comments related to this before we have a vote? Um, yeah. Um, Mr. Mahamza? Yeah, just a quick, yeah, I want a uh, clarification. So there's currently no guidelines to how um, extracurricular extra activities are conducted virtually? Uh, Dr. Williams, if you mind answering. So what we did this past spring, we had to develop a memorandum of understanding. Um, remember, staff members were already doing the extracurricular activities uh, three quarters of the year. And the question would be, how would they move forward for the remaining of this year? 
uh, last year. And so in developing a memorandum of understanding, um, what we said, there's a, there's a framework in which if you are a sponsor, this is what we, you know, here's the framework, this is what your duties are, here's some responsibilities, and then the staff was very creative in coming up with moving forward. But just remember, we were three quarters of the way uh, through a school year. Now starting virtually is, is, is something we just have to explore. So um, that's why I said this is gonna be a little challenging when we talk about extracurricular activities, unlike what we experienced um, back in March through the end of the year. Um, but again, that's, you know, we do know Kids got to be well-rounded. Kids want to be involved. There's so many extracurricular activities. We just have to figure that out at this time, and we're just not there when it comes to extracurricular activities. You know, we are really yeah. focusing on the teaching and learning, but this is equally important because, again, we recognize that students want to be involved beyond the classroom instruction. So we'll, we'll have to figure it out and work with our partners to come up with some ideas. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Williams. I, I see Ms. Joe's hand up. Did you already speak? Or did you want to yes, speak again? A quick, a quick question to Ms. Hen um, in terms of extracurricular activities. Do you envision that being the, um, you know, the cup stacking competition, the robotics, the coding that's for elementary school children? Is that what you mean when you said the extracurricular activities, the environmental club, uh, things that I think are needed for children for all around development? Yes, Ms. Joe's. Precisely. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other board member uh, discussion, Ms. Gover, can you call the vote, please? Dr. Hager? Can Ms. Hen reread the motion again, please? Ms. Hen? Sure. I move that the reopening plan be amended to include guidance around school and extracurricular activities in a virtual environment to include resources for student leaders volunteer organizations, and school administrators. Thank you. Ms. Gover? I vote yes. Okay. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? No. Mr. Offerman? No. Mr. Mahomsa? I'm going to abstain in this one. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Yes. Ms. Jost? It's a tough one. Um, no. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? No. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Favor, seven. Thank you, that motion carries. So Dr. Hager, I believe you, uh, well, not believe, I know that earlier today you had sent in questions. Um, so if you could um, go ahead and start with that, please. Um, sure, so uh, a lot of my questions have already been answered through the discussion that we've had, um, but I did have a few questions just about sports engagement. Um, and it seems from the draft proposal that uh, there would not likely be any sports engagement until January, but I know Dr. Williams just mentioned the PSSA guidance. Could you talk a little bit more about that? I just I think that people are going to be very concerned about uh, fall sports and what that would look like, especially for seniors who may be, you know, up for scholarships and 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 situations like that. If you could talk a little bit more about that, I'd appreciate it. So thank you for that. Um, I I can't speak a lot of it, only that we're going to be working with uh, MPSSA to help guide all of the districts across Maryland how to approach sports. Um, we need to uh, have some understanding probably sooner than later because with the fall sports of, of practicing and conditioning and all, well, conditioning than practicing. Um, uh, just stay tuned for that. This is a little bit bigger than Baltimore County. This is the state of Maryland in terms of guidance. Of course, the concern is groups of kids coming together and um, how restricting it may be for the social distancing and the mask at this time. So, you know, my stance to staff is I need to hear and understand 
what the state wants us to do and to really elevate this uh, with my colleagues. We all have the same concern as we're uh, approaching the end of July, what will the conditioning and fall sport will look like, but um, I don't have all of the facts right now. I know there's some upcoming meetings to discuss this issue and we hope to have some clarity. Um, but without it, I just said, it looks like we wouldn't have it for the whole semester just to be safe. But again, it's that flexibility. If in fact we can do something, um, I'm absolutely we will put forth some plan of action. But again, this is a little bit bigger than Baltimore County, it's the state of Maryland. And I just don't have all of the facts uh, related to athletics, but I'll be happy to follow up as soon as we get some direction um, from the state and from our state superintendent. Yeah, and I just wanted to you know, point out that Baltimore County Rec and Parks has been having sports go on for weeks now. So I think that's where some, some parents might get a little concerned about you know, a statement of, of not having it for a while. So I'm glad to hear that there's, there's a discussion. It's not a, not a hard line in the sand uh, for sure. So that, that's good to know though. So, thank you. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that parks and recs and those sports and our athletics with the um, with the state um, slight differences, um, and and so uh, we want to follow what the guidelines are stating, and we want to make sure everyone is safe. But you know, right now I know there's some upcoming meetings. We'll we'll provide some updates to the board. So thank you for raising that, that question. Thank you. Um, and next we have um, Mr. Muhamza. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, uh, you, Madam Chair, um, is it possible maybe to include that in, uh, in a future agenda item, um, an update from Dr. Williams? Because I think this, is, this issue is gonna be really important uh, before we start uh, the school year. Thank you for that, Mr. Muhamza. Uh, Dr. Williams, we do have a meeting scheduled on August 11th, um, is that, an update that you can bring to the board at that time, if not sooner, in terms of the um, issues around sports for our children. So I'll be happy to provide an update. Um, hopefully we'll know something sooner, but we can start with the August 11th uh, board meeting with an update um, or anytime sooner if we have information. So yes, we can do that. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. And Dr. Williams, I had a question. Um, I know that there's the Maryland Public Secondary School Athletic Association guidelines, and that's for um, inter-district sports and across um, the state. They run the regional championships and the state championships. Um, but also in terms of engaging the students in healthy activities, um, this pandemic has been very challenging for everyone. But especially for our youth, we wanna try and provide normalcy and also that actual benefit of physical exercise as well as being um, in a safe environment with their peers. And with the safety of our staff and students and families being well mitigated with virtual instruction and the fact that sports are an all volunteer um, activity. So the coaches, they volunteer to do that, but also the students do. Um, I was wondering, you know, how much that um, will impact the decision, but also if, even if MP um, SSA decides to not hold sports, Baltimore County has in recent years increased their intramural sports at the middle school level. So I'm wondering if that's something that could be considered for Baltimore County, because each district is different in its health impacts from COVID. Um, as a way that children could pursue their sports, um, but perhaps in a safer environment if MP SSA uh, decides to cancel statewide events. So I'm just asking if that's something that has been considered or if that could be considered. I have not uh, discussed the specifics around that, Ms. Causey, so thank you for raising that. Staff is on the line, we'll capture that. And once I have a conversation with Mr. Sai. Um, and Dr. McComas, we'll see what we can do. Um, I know there's always some limitations when it comes to the intramurals, um, but again, we have not really um, discussed what options, as I mentioned in the plan, uh, but you raise an interesting point. 
and we'll be happy to follow up with the athletics department. And we do understand that this is such a comprehensive shift for uh, the school district and that clearly the social emotional, the safety aspects need to be covered first and then the academics. And then as you pointed out, the well-roundedness of our children. So I appreciate that consideration. Other board members, Ms. Joes. Ms. Gauzy, there's a motion on the floor, I believe. Uh, Ms. Hager, did you make a motion or you were just asking questions? I just no, had there a was question. The, there was the original motion to approve Dr. Williams' uh, reopening plan and then Ms. Ken brought her motions, her amendments. So there is the original motion still that needs to be passed along with the amendments. Yes, thank you. And uh, Dr. Hager had sent in comments earlier, so I just wanted to make sure that we process those. Um, Dr. Hager, did you have other questions? Um, I had a quick question that I, I did not send in earlier, so I, I just wanted to ask it outside of uh, my, my original time. Um, but I did... Um, I heard from a parent of elementary school children uh, where both parents are working parents and they're very concerned about the attendance, um, keeping attendance for elementary school children and whether there would be an asynchronous option for elementary school children. I thought that was a really good point. So I just wanted to raise that to see if that's something that's been considered with the reopening plan. Dr. Williams, um, you know, given that, that young children will need to be supervised to some extent and if parents are working, um, has there been, has that been discussed among your team? Well, um, it's interesting. We got a lot of feedback about the asynchronous learning back in the spring and folks wanting more and they wanted more live instruction. So I think to that point, we will have to work with individual families. I don't want to make a blanket statement at this point um, because, <clears throat> as you well know, the state MSDE will be looking. I'm sorry, Dr. Hager, I didn't take my camera off so you can see that I'm is actually me talking. Um, we, we will have to work with our um, State Department of Education. I think that raised a question or concern that we would have to explore. Um, but thank you for that feedback. And that, I guess we'll just work with individual schools and individual parents. Yeah. That's thank it. you. No more questions. <laughs> Other board members. Uh, there is a motion on the floor, but other uh, board members that had questions or uh, comments. Mr. Mahamza, was that you? Yeah. Um, in your plan, uh, you talked about uh, your admission, administration's goal is having a one-to-one -one ratio for computers. How close are we to achieving that? Do you have the data available to you? Uh, so, Mr. Mahamza, I don't have the data in front of me. However, we do know that there were some younger grades, K to two, that we had to explore. And with the CARES Act, um, we are going to, we are striving to get to that one-to-one. Uh, -one. And so um, let me provide an update to the board in terms of the numbers. Um, uh, and I can do that. I just don't have that data in front of me at this time. Yeah. and. Um you talked about mobile hotspots uh, in order to increase um, uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, what are those? Can you describe um, how what form that mobile hotspot comes in? I can't. I can't. That's 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 my friend Jim Corns and his team. I'm unable to answer that at this time. Mr. Mahamza, did you have additional questions? Uh, no, they're just those two. Hey, uh, Dr. Okay, Williams, other board is, members? Ms. Causey, this is Dr. Scriven. I, I just Thank wanted you, to let them, Yes, sir. <laughs> I just wanted to let, uh, let you know that we can have that ready for you guys uh, for the weekly update that comes out, if that's okay. Yes, that will be, that will be uh, great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, other board members with questions or comments? I just wanted to say that I appreciate all the um, discussion. This is a very important decision for our school system. 
and we appreciate Dr. Williams and all of the um, staff and all of the stakeholders that have provided input into, um, into this decision making. So if uh, there's no other discussion from board members, then we will take a roll call vote on, um, on the um, motion as amended. Ms. Gover? Dr. Hager? Sorry, this is the motion, the original motion, correct? Yeah. What is the motion, please? Ms. Gover, if you can restate the motion and the amendments. The motion is to approve, sorry, one second. The motion is to approve Baltimore County Public Schools reopening plan for fall 2020 as amended. What is the amendment? And what does that mean? What amendment? What, did I miss that? In, it's the two amendments that, uh, two of the amendments that passed that were proposed by Ms. Hen. Got it, thank you. And it's to open it virtually, right? Is that the motion? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Williams, if you just wanna restate for everyone your, your so, statement. I would ask Ms. Ms. Gover to add to my statement based on the two amendments that um, passed. I'm requesting board approval to engage students in virtual instruction for the upcoming school year 2021, beginning September 8th, 2020, through the end of the first semester on January 29th, 21. Ms. Gover, can you add the two amendments? The two amendments that passed were to indicate that BCPS will survey all stakeholders following each academic quarter of virtual instruction in order to use feedback to promote continuous improvement and to include guidance around school and extracurricular activities in a virtual environment to include resources for student leaders, volunteer organizations, and school administrators. Thank you. Ms. Gover, if you can call the vote, please. Ms. Howie. Ms. Howie. Or Mr. Um, Nussbaum. I don't get to vote. No, I'm sorry. I have a question. Since the original motion has changed considerably, do we have to have a, a, a first and second? Or, an, or no, the, the, not? The, the motion. This is, this is Andy Nussbaum. The motion was amended by the amendments that were passed. So it's the, the, the vote now is on the motion as the amendments. I mean, I, sorry, on the motion as amended by the amendments that were passed. Thank you. That, does this, Mr. Nussbaum, mean that this is our final vote that we are now voting on a plan? I believe so. I mean, it's, I think the motion before the board was that uh, Dr. Williams' uh, plan as amended by the board. Okay. So to, to clarify, this statement is Dr. Williams' statement plus the amendments. The plan itself, as has been pointed out by Dr. Williams, is in a draft form. And given the approval of the virtual instruction for the first semester, then he and his team will be able to go in and do all of the uh, work that needs to be done with process procedures to implement the virtual instruction. So th the plan is in draft form, and as Dr. <laughs> Williams has mentioned, uh, will be going. He will be going through processes to full out the whole plan. Okay, Ms. Gover. Dr. Hager. Yes. Mr. Kuhn. Yes. Ms. Tester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Melinda? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Bobby? Yes. Ms. Joe? Yes. Ms. Kinsley? No. Ms. Mack? Yes. 
Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is item D, announcements. Our next Board of Education meeting is regularly scheduled for Tuesday, August 11th, 2020, starting at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, everyone. The last item is item E, closed session. May I have a motion to go into administrative function session for the board's retreat? So moved, Hen. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Hamza. May I have a roll call vote? Dr. Hager? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Fester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Mahamza? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Foster? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. 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 Somebody's mic on. And what were you saying, Ms. Mack? I thought I said yes. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Rouse? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The open session is now adjourned, and we're moving into administrative function. Thank you.